What's going on Vault Dwellers, Top Ranking Noob back at it again with another video for Fallout 76 and this week we got another challenge for a brand new 3 star legendary weapon. Although the word brand new is probably not accurate, this is a repeat weapon we've already seen in the past, just like last week's Soul Survivor. Only unlike last week, this week's weapon does not suck. It's got awesome attributes, it's god tier, you gotta grab this up if you didn't get the chance to do it last time. Uh, I'm talking of course about the Unstoppable Monster. We're going to check out its attributes as well as an easy way how to grab it up. I'm also going to show you some easy ways to do some of the other weekly challenges at the end of this video, kind of as bonus tips. So if you guys find this video helpful, do be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you guys want to check out some other cool Fallout 76 items, make sure you head on over to U4GM. They got a lot of cool gear in their store. I'm going to be putting a link of their website, if I can talk, down in my description, along with a coupon code that's going to be saving you 5%. So be sure to check those guys out. With all of that being said and done, let's go ahead and get started and grab up this unstoppable monster. All right, so as we pop into our weekly challenges, we can see that in order to grab this up, we need to kill a human-like creature with a melee weapon, simple enough, cook a meal while we're drunk, I'm always drunk, we need to claim a workstation while mutated, eat raw meat, and kill a critter while starving. Uh, I'm going to be doing all of this in Flatwoods, as you know by now, I like to do these in the easiest areas areas possible that way anyone can do this at any particular level and we're going to be able to knock out all five of these at least in the general area of flatwoods of course eating raw meat you can do that right after you kill a critter but there's no shortage of things to kill in flatwoods for that all right, so I am just north of Flatwoods right next to the motel. Uh, and here you can see the opossum there that is almost always spawning there. He counts as a critter. So if you knock him out, he's dead. That's one. And if you eat his meat, <laughs> uh, giggity, uh, you can eat that meat and you got raw meat eaten. That's two out of five right out of the bat. So we're already about, what, 40% of the way there. What we're going to do next is kill a human-like creature. And if we go to the southern part of Flatwoods we're gonna find that red rocket and here we can kill a couple of ghouls here now keep in mind I usually keep unarmed weapons equipped and uh, those do not count as melee so this power fist for example does not trigger a completion on that challenge uh, but this baton will so you got to have a melee weapon one thing also worth noting here, many of you probably already know this, but of course we are in survival mode in order to trigger these challenges as they won't work in adventure mode, unless of course they brought back a bug that existed in the past. All right, so at this point, all we need to do is cook a meal while we're drunk and then claim a workshop while mutated. Now, by now, I'm sure you realize that alcohol is laying all over the wastelands, but if for any reason you just don't have any on you, you can go to the vendor right there in Flatwoods, and he's usually good for some beer or maybe some liquor, whatever your needs are. So, you know, in this case, I didn't have any alcohol on me, but I did have 12 caps. Seemed like a pretty sweet deal and a nice time saver. Also, there are all kinds of things laying around Flatwoods that you can cook up between plants, Brahmin, whatever you need. So again, whatever you need in order to complete this challenge is right there in Flatwoods. Once you got your alcohol, make sure you consume it, grab up whatever you're going to cook, and then go to the cooking station and voila, that's going to give you the fourth out of this challenge. All right, now to the fifth and final one. We're going to head over to Sunshine Meadows Industry Industry Plant, Industrial Plant. I can't remember what this is called now. This is just west of Flatwoods. Now, this is, of course, assuming that you're already mutated. And if you're not, all you need to do is stand in some water, collect a whole bunch of rads until you're mutated. Make sure you don't use any rad away between the time you get mutated and the time you go to claim this workshop and it's as simple as that don't be afraid of those rads to get your mutation once you get that mutation you are rewarded with the unstoppable monster a god tier unarmed weapon now i believe some people mentioned last week that they were unable to collect the soul survivor because they had already collected in the past event but as you can see here i actually have two in my inventory so i didn't try it last week but in this case i was able to get this unstoppable monster a second time all right so taking a closer look we're starting off with 
40% less damage taken while power attacking. That doesn't seem all that great, but when you look at the second attribute, 40% more power attack damage. These two attributes complement themselves very well, especially for a bloodied build when you have a survivability issue. Uh, and of course, the last one is our bloodied build, which means it does more damage the lower your health is. Perfect weapon for the unarmed bloody build which is what I'm currently working on. This is a work in progress, but I'll show you my build right now. Of course, I got Barbarian, I got Blockers so that, uh, you know, I got some more resistance. Incisor allows me to ignore my enemy's armor by 75%. Uh, martial Arts, I got 60% more swing speed, and of course, Iron Fist, which gives me more damage for unarmed. Uh, I got glowing sights for those glowing enemies. I really don't know why I have six perception right now. I probably don't need that concentrated fire, and I'll move that. My two endurance keep going random, just depending on my situation. Nothing really important there. Charisma plus four for Lone Wonder when I'm alone. Intelligence, I gotta have this nerd rage for my bloody build. This is extremely important for bloody build. And then just that makeshift warrior makes sure that my weapons last longer. White Knight under agility because I want my armor to quit breaking. And of course this adrenaline is another must have for those of you trying to do the most amount of damage. And Gun Fu just because I love Gun Fu. It's an awesome attribute. And lastly, under luck, I got Bloodied Mess and Serendipity, which are a must-have for Bloodied. Uh, and of course, I got, what is it, Class Freak and Starch Jeans for my mutations. Now, when it comes to my current build, it's imperfect. Like I said, it's a work in progress. And one of the things I'm really lacking at this point is mutations. But even with an imperfect build, even if you're not bloodied or unarmed, this is an awesome weapon to have. As you can see, I have no problem one-hitting a lot of the lower-level enemies. With some of the more advanced enemies, it's going to take three to four shots. If you get a real solid build with all the right mutations, like, uh, what is it, Twisted Muscles, things along them lines, you could probably one or maybe two shot these creatures, such as an 80 Alpha Scorch Beast, and of course the Behemoth. In my case, since I'm working on my build still, I think it took me about three shots or four shots for both of them. But by the time it was all said and done, I mean, honestly... Yeah, these guys went down pretty easy regardless, assuming that I was actually able to hit them. That's with the more advanced enemies. Uh, with uh, all the regular enemies, if you do a power attack on them, chances are you're going to one-shot everything. If you are a bloodied build, you do have to be a little careful, though, because bloodied build can be very unforgiving, and if you're not paying attention... These enemies can take you down. Of course, one of the nice things about patch 11, one of the few things that actually worked with this patch is if you die inside, you actually respawn inside. So it saves you quite a bit of travel time. Who would have thought one thing actually worked with this god awful patch? But that's me talking trash. I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that. It's not usually my style. My point is, this is a pretty awesome weapon, regardless of your build, so you should definitely take the five minutes to pick it up. All right, with that being said, let's take a quick look at the other weekly challenges that are worth our time. We got Claiming the Workshop at Thunder Mountain. That takes like all of 10 seconds to do, assuming you're not contested. Uh, destroying assor uh, assorted robots, if I can talk. Gathering building supplies, nice and simple. And the last two I really don't think are worth the time, which is taking pictures of wildlife in Cranberry Bog and doing the Hunter Hunted quest while wearing different costumes. Uh, of course, the wildlife in Cranberry Bog is random spawns for some of those creatures so you really have to put in a lot of effort to get those 30 atoms and the hunter hunted quest i mean honestly uh since launch i think i've actually only played that quest once because four players have to turn into a certain radio station in order to gauge into pvp and nobody ever engages into pvp on that at least not with the hunter hunted uh, quest. That's my experience, but maybe you had different experiences with that quest. Uh, if so, let me know down in the comments, but in my opinion, those two just aren't worth doing. This uh, grabbing up the Thunder Mountain workstation takes all of 10 seconds to do, assuming you're not contested and it's worth 30 atoms, which is pretty sweet. 
Another one that's worth doing is uh, destroying assorted robots. Chances are throughout the week you'll accidentally do this anyways, but if you want to knock it out quickly, you can come to White Springs for most of them, with the exception of the Liberator droids here. The only thing about killing bots at uh, White Springs is you have a tendency of pissing them all off all at one time, but you might accidentally grab up another cool legendary weapon, such as this bloodied multi-purpose axe, so that's a pretty sweet score there all by itself. Once you attack those robots though they're just going to keep on attacking you basically until to the best of my knowledge they'll keep attacking you until you get off of the server and of course we can't forget about those liberator bots in order to grab those up my recommendation is just spawn at vault 76 if you go to the west like 10 feet you got a whole bunch of li liberators right there in the area and of course they're extremely low level so nice easy kills all in all that might take you about three or four minutes but that's an extra 20 atoms pretty sweet now the last challenge that I think is worth your time is gathering building supplies. It wants you to scrap junk that has aluminum, collect wood, scrap junk that's got concrete, copper, stuff like that. You only have to complete five out of the list of, I don't remember how many there were, like eight. I started off doing this the hard way, but I'm going to show you a bit of an easier way to do that. And what I mean by the hard way is I started off making this video telling you that you should go to Sugar Grove in order to grab up clickboards and desk fans and those globes as well as the telephones and you're going to get springs and copper and screws and you might still need to do that. And then of course I went to say that you need to go to Blackwater Mines to grab up the oil cans and the gas cans in order to get the oil and the aluminum. All of that's the hard way. There's actually a much simpler way assuming that you already have some resources to start off with with. So all we're going to do is find ourselves a tinker bench. And what we're going to do is out of these items that it wants us to scrap, we're just going to bulk them. So let's take, for example, copper. It wants us to scrap items that have copper. We're going to do some bulk copper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scrap the bulk. Now, I know what you're thinking with patch 11, they made it to where bulk items no longer automatically scrap, but you could still manually scrap them. So go into the scrap section of any workbench. And if you go to your junk icon, you can manually scrap the bulk items and that's going to count towards the challenge. So you could do this with copper. You could do it with aluminum springs. Obviously, all you're doing is consuming plastic, but you are going to get the challenge complete for the week. And of course, by doing that, you're going to complete the challenge, and that challenge is worth a solid 40 atoms, which is a pretty sweet deal. Again, you probably don't have to do it this way. You'll probably accidentally scrap all these items throughout the week, but that's just a nice, simple way of speeding it up. Honestly, with uh, the rest of the challenges, though, I don't really think they're worth your time between taking the pictures of wildlife and the cranberry bog and then that hunter hunted. Uh, but I mean, if you feel differently, by all means, let me know in the, the chat. Let us know if there's easier ways to get that done. They are worth 30 atoms each, which is pretty sweet. It's hard to pass up. Nonetheless, that's it for this video. I hope you guys did find it helpful. And if you did, do consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. That way you'll be the first to be notified anytime I have new uploads. Ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate you all watching and we will see you all next time.